Cape Town, poised on the southern tip of the Cape Peninsula, is already known for its beauty, diverse cultures and vibrant nightlife. However, it is now also emerging as an innovative hub of technological activity, especially in the sphere of medical devices. This is due mainly to the University of Cape Town and its innovative researchers and academics that are using cutting-edge technology to impact on ordinary people's lives. The University of Cape Town has long since held a tradition of making important contributions towards global medical innovation. And now, through its ongoing commitment to make people, especially disadvantaged people's lives better, the University of Cape Town is gradually positioning itself and Cape Town amongst the forerunners of medical advances in the world. One such device is the aortic deployment device which is currently being developed. This is the Chris Barnard Center in Cape Town, a testimony to the pioneering heart transplant surgery done by Chris Barnard in 1967, the success of which catapulted him and South African heart surgery onto the international stage. Today, this building houses a new generation of cardiac professionals who are actively striving to maintain the high standards set by Christian Barnard. Professor Peter Ziller is a cardiac surgeon who currently holds the Chris Barnard Chair, a highly sought after position in the cardiac world. He is part of a team who are in the process of developing a cardiac device which will bring affordable hope to people suffering from rheumatic heart disease. So you can imagine that between North Africa and South Africa, a billion people suffering from a rheumatic heart disease at a very high percentage has no access to heart surgery. There are currently many candidates who would benefit from the heart valve device, like Mustafar Williams. He has recently been through an open heart surgery to replace a valve for the second time. My heart was like weak, I mean like, after 16 years ago, to have a serious surgery, I'm like, it's a long time. In the first world, this disease affects very few people, and so the available technology and procedures are very expensive and require a large team of cardiac surgeons. Professor David Williams, a veteran in the field of medical engineering, says currently people from the developing world who suffer from rheumatic heart disease struggle to find effective treatment. As no doubt you've heard, we are working with young children and young adults who have rheumatic heart disease after having rheumatic fever. And that's profound, very large numbers here in Africa, in Southeast Asia, in South America. And it's a huge problem. Now when you have heart valve disease in the first world, the United States and Europe, there are well-established technologies to replace or repair the valves. But that requires open heart surgery, which is very expensive and uh, takes large facilities. Uh, these simply aren't available in the parts of the world where it is rheumatic fever, that's the problem. In other parts of the world it is old age, basically. Dr. Dion Bezadenhout is a polymer scientist. He says the best material to use in the making of this device is plastic. The, the easy and simple answer is because it's easy to manufacture into the exact shape that you want. A plastic, you can shape exactly the three-dimensional shape that you want, uh, and you can also control the thickness of it. So in order to get this durability, people have been working for 50 years now on making polymer hard valves, and that's the type of valve that we're working on. The new device would really benefit people like Mustafar, who would not have to go through the long and uncomfortable recovery period that heart valve surgery involves. The table I'm taking is to help me, whatever, whatever, but there's no point of saying that I still feel bad. Funding is always a key factor in the development of any medical devices. Luckily, in this case, the Bidvest Group's Doug Band came to the rescue. 
that I had met uh, Professor Peter Ziller uh, on a social basis and subsequently was advised that uh, he was engaged in this project and had, with his partners had spent uh, a number of years uh, working very hard at it and uh, that it got to the point where he uh, was facing uh, a really urgent need for funding and uh, that led to a very happy conclusion where we made an investment in the project. The driving force behind this project remains how it will benefit people. Mustafar is just one such person, but there are millions more whose lives would be impacted significantly.